good morning and uh, welcome to I think what will be the final video for our clematis wristlet sew along I think we can get everything finished in this last hour of stitching I'm gonna try uh, so last time we left off last week we were working on our zippers so uh, I'm gonna finish my zippers up um, you see we're working on zippers here in our our uh, sequence of how we're moving forward with this and remember I told you to cut out like two by two inch squares to use for the ends of your little zipper tabs and uh, so I did that but I I'm going to cut mine back so that um, I think they're a little wide so I'm just going to lay this under my ruler at a half an inch there, and I'm just going to cut off whatever sticks out. And I'm gonna do that on all my zippers. And this is vinyl, but if you're using cloth, you will you just can adjust your folds uh, as, you've, as these pieces that you have folded in. So, uh, and you'll see that in the um, pattern instructions. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm going to stitch down all the ends on my zippers. So I've got this one done. This is my cloth one. So this one's done. And when you get everything stitched down uh, on the end of your zipper tabs, you'll come in and you'll trim these so they're even with the zipper. Just carefully trim them so that they're even with the zipper. And we're gonna do this on our vinyl also, if you're using vinyl. So the ends of all your zippers should look like this. I should say your zipper, because you might just be doing one wristlet, and I'm doing three, um, so that you can see some different ways that you can have fun making these little wristlets. So the zipper should look like that. It should be exactly eight inches. We, we talked about that last week, and we've got that all ready, lined up. So, um, okay, I'm gonna trim my ends back to a half an inch and stitch these on. I'll, uh, I'll film over at the machine so you can see how I get across the ends of these. And by the way, these zippers are all nylon. I should have probably mentioned that early on, but uh, all the zipper by the tape that I use is nylon, so it's okay to sew across it, even though it looks like it's metal. It's easy to sew. Okay, so trimming and sewing coming right up. I'm just gonna trim all my zipper ends back to a half an inch. And even though I told you to, to cut these little zipper ends bigger, um, still do that. I mean, on if you make this little bag again, or maybe you'll, you'll decide that you want to make another bag someday. And it'll have, it'll call for zipper ends like this. I've got this right at half an inch, and there's about a quarter of an inch overhang. It's always better to be able to trim rather than try to make something that is too small to begin with fit. So, you know, maybe I wouldn't have wanted to trim off quite as much, or, or maybe I would have wanted to leave it long on a bigger bag. Maybe I would have left it wider. You know, you're the designer up to you and as long as you uh, get these on to where when you stitch you're catching both sides that's the main thing and enough room to open and close your zipper so there we go we're ready to stitch across these ends so this is kind of a, a suede sort of a vinyl and uh, it's a little thicker 
And I have my zipper foot on, which is a D foot. So I have my dual feed down back in here. Anytime you have a D foot on, you have to have your dual feed down. Well, you don't have to, but you should. <laughs> you won't have very good stitching if you don't. And uh, uh, my zipper foot, I have my needle four clicks to the left. Um, I wanna get pretty close to this edge and I want it to look nice and neat and pretty, but I also wanna be sure and catch the bottom underneath here too so that I'm catching both layers of my fold over the end of my zipper. So my zipper tab's gonna look nice. So, and I'm gonna turn my stitch length, um, I'm gonna put my stitch length up to 2.85. All right, switch threads. Switch to my Teflon foot, because this is vinyl again. Got it on there where I want it, and let's see if we can scoot through here. Oh yes, much easier. I move my needle back to the right, I believe one click, and I'm using the edge of the, uh, uh, this edge of the inside here to put the edge of my zipper tap through so I can have something to follow. And that looks marvelous. That looks much better than, I may have to go ahead and take the champagne colored vinyl off the silver zipper and do it again. I'm still thinking about it. The 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 kind of the rule of thumb, I guess you'd say, if you're sewing along and and something doesn't go just exactly the way you want it to, and you you give yourself some time to think about it, and. Uh, if after a while you're still thinking about it, you might as well go back and change. Redo it, restitch it, rethink it, recut it, because you're, you're always going to remember that it's there. If you don't, look at that, gorgeous. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely going to redo my champagne colored zipper ends. Okay, so now, We'll trim these. I'll go back over to the cutting table and we'll trim these. And we'll get these, we'll get started sewing in our zippers. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put new tabs on the end. I've got the old ones taken off on the end of my silver zipper. And this zipper is metallic. This is kind of rough. He, this is nylon coils, but uh, you know, you can see the zipper sparkles. It's got some metallic threads in it. So that might be why I had a little trouble. And also then the vinyl that I want to use for the zipper tabs is kind of a suede. And I didn't have my Teflon foot on to, to glide across here. So there's two things that I could blame that on. But one thing I'm gonna do and this is a little trick that bag makers use quite often. When things don't want to stay put just right, we use permanent double stick tape. And I'm positioning this tape, this is 3 16 inch, so I'm positioning it so that I'm not going to be sewing through it when I go across my little zipper tab. And it's going to hold my zipper tab a lot better than my fingers and, or clips. When you get done working with something small like this, the clips are wonderful until you get under the needle. And then it's kind of a wrestling match to um, you know, get, get started with your, and I'm just kind of guesstimating the middle here. And I want my zipper to be nice and straight on the front and the back. So then I will fold this over. 
and it'll stay put and I can stitch across there a lot easier. Plus this time I'm going to use my Teflon foot. And I might even use a little bit longer stitch length. I had it at 2.85, but you know, sometimes you run into fabrics that um, you might have to put in a larger needle or you might need to rethink um, your stitch length or your technique. And this happens in bag making a lot because there are so many new and upcoming techniques and fabrics and materials. Everything is evolving with bag making right now. Okay, now I'm going to go stitch this. And I'm, this time I'm confident it'll work just fine. There we go. Perfect. My Teflon foot slid across here just fine. Nothing moved. So let's trim. And trim. Make sure we trim all our zippers up even so they look nice and pretty and they won't, um, you know, put your eye off when you're putting your zipper in. Let me get some of this out of our way. And I'm going to trim my black zipper too. Make sure everything's nice and pretty, clean, neat. There we go. All right, now we're ready to begin installing our zippers. In the directions, in the pattern directions, the designer suggests that you pin your zipper to the lining first. But uh, we're gonna do it differently. We're kinda, we're rogue, aren't we? You guys know I'm, I'm rogue. I, I take off and do things all kinds of different ways. And so we need to find the center of our zipper. So we'll do that just by marking a little mark here. I darken that mark once I get this down so I can see it a little better. Should have used black instead of pink, huh? Okay, so this is the back. This is the front of my bag. So let's start with the back. And actually, let's start with the front. We got to start with the front. So, um, all bags, it doesn't matter if it's a suitcase or a makeup bag or anything, any kind of bags, they all open from left to right. So you'll see that the zipper has this rounded end. That's the end we put on the zipper when we were starting to put our zippers together when we were using zipper tape. And the flat side here this is the flat side. It goes, this is the back, and this is the front. So you always want your zippers to open from left to right. And so we are going to put the zipper on the front of our bag, not the lining like the pattern says. We're going to do the front of the bag. And there's my mark for the center of the zipper, and we're going to put it right here in the center. We're going to line up our center markings and clip it. And remember before one of the other videos in this series I said in bag making you do an awful lot of basting. And the most important place to baste is your zipper. So we will be basting this, and we're going to baste both sides. Um, 
we could do the lining. I guess we could do the lining on top of this, but um, but we're, for now we're going to just clip this and then we're going to baste it. And you can see that my zipper tape is is um, is being a little bit contrary. But if you just kind of work with it, I wouldn't clip zipper tape because of the potential of fraying and you would never want it to come apart good enough that someday in your bag your customer open their bag and their zipper come out. So here's what our zipper is going to look like when it's sewn in. It'll be a little curve to it. And so I'm going to take this to the machine now and I'm going to baste it at between an eighth and a quarter of an inch along this edge. I've got my little bag on here, my zipper, using my zipper foot, dual feed, and I'm just working out um, where I want, oops, where I want my needle to land because this is just basting. So I'm going to, I'm going to try just an eighth of an inch. And I might come in just a skosh. Let's see if we can get through here. And I'm using 2.85 stitch length. And when you come to your zipper head, just reach under here and pull it out of the way. And when we get down to where it is, we'll stop and we'll push it back up. I'm going to grab my stiletto here because I see quite a bit of my bag fabric showing. Stilettos are wonderful little tools for sewing because you can actually pick fabric up and move it over. And we want this to be about the same amount of zipper tape showing on each side of the bag when it's zipped up and put together. And you know if you try to sew around this zipper head you'll have a meander in your stitching so just send it back out of the way and baste on. that the Apostle Paul says in the Bible, press on, press on, press on. That's what we got to do. All right, now then, we're to the end of this side of the zipper, and we've just basted. This is only basting. All right, whoops, so we're going to go um, back over to the workstation, and we're going to put our lining on this side. you have any worries at all that um, something will shift under here. And even I just clipped my zipper when I did my zipper basting along here, you know, when I put the zipper on. You can use the double stick tape. The double sided tape is great for this. And as I said before, the the tape that I like the best is 3 16 inch, and most seams are in bag making are a quarter, 3 8 and half an inch. So you wouldn't ever get your needle all sticky with that because it's out of the seam allowance all the time. Um, but you could certainly use double sided tape. Now we need a quarter of an inch. And we're going to have to use, to use a zipper foot to do this, we're going to have to use one or the other of these two lines on the front of my zipper foot here. So let's scoot it over till I'm right lined up with that line. My edge of my fabric is going on the line on the right side of my presser foot. So now I need, I can get a quarter of an inch. 
Let's use my little wonderful ruler and scooch my needle over. Check carefully. And that's it. That's it. So, get my foot pedal where I can reach it. And here we go. I'm going to stay right on that line with the edge of my fabric. And I am going to backstitch this time. There are many, many times that I don't backstitch, but this time I will. And I'm still using a 2.85 stitch length. And also, again, just a reminder, under my finger right here is my zipper pull. So I'm coming right up to it. And I'm gonna just reach under here and move it on down out of the way. And when I get to it down the way, I'll move it back. Keep it out of the way so I don't have a big wide uh, bulge in my stitching. And I never hurry. Let me see if I can get this thread out of here. of this side of the zipper. And then we'll do the other side exactly the same. and we'll see how it lays and make a decision. We've got to make decisions all the time, don't we? Okay, back to the workstation. So I'm just checking here to see how this would lay if we don't clip the curve. So we're going to top stitch this i got to look in the directions, but I'm pretty sure it says to top stitch this. And we got a pretty nice curve there. And I don't want to trim or clip into the zipper tape, although if we had to, since we basted it and stitched the seam, we've got two, two rows of stitching, so that might be okay, but I think I'm going to try it just like this. I think I'm going to try it. Okay, let's look up and see if we're supposed to top stitch. No, Siri, I don't want you. Sorry. Alrighty. Clip the seam allowance, making sure not to cut any stitching. That's just if you need to, I suppose. Press exterior and lining panels away from the zipper and top stitch the seam allowance along the zipper. And there's the photo. So, all right, and then repeat these steps to attach the second exterior panel. Okay, and lining. All right, so it looks like we're gonna be top stitching next. I was gonna do that all at once on both sides, but since the pattern is not talking like that's a very good idea, I guess I will do what the pattern says. And I've made a lot of these, and I don't remember messing one up on top stitching, so I must have followed the directions. Okay, we'll go top stitch. Okay, so I'm still using my zipper foot. Um, 
And I'm going to start my top stitching in about half an inch or so. I'm not going to top stitch from the very edge. I'm going to come in about half an inch, and then on the other side I'll stop at half an inch before I finish up because it makes it so much nicer to turn. Um, when the bag is finished, you don't have that extra little bump there. And I want to do a top stitch at 1 8 inch. So let's figure out where we're at. Well, it looks like that's about right. And we are at two clicks to the right on the needle position. And I am going to back stitch a couple stitches here. Keep my presser foot right on the edge of the fabric. doesn't say to do that in the pattern. Well, this is a little bag making tip. Okay, we are done top stitching. Oh, it looks so pretty. Looks really, really nice. Trim my threads here. I'm using a light colored thread in my bobbin and a kind of a pinky mauve color in my the top of my machine so that they kind of blend. That oh, looks really nice. Both sides look really nice. Okay, well, let's go put the other half of the bag on the other side of the zipper. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the other side of the bag, the back side of the bag on. And we're going to look for our center mark on our zipper. And just a reminder, I said a little earlier that you could definitely, you can definitely put down double-sided tape along here. If you think something's going to shift or, or move. But um, I usually get along with just clips and once again let's see I think I'll clip it from this side once again we are going to baste lots and lots of basting and we're gonna baste this in and then we'll come back and we'll We'll move the zipper slide out of the way just like we did before if we need to. So we got a nice straight line of stitching. And be sure and make sure your little zipper pulls out of the way too. On one of the bag making groups I'm on, it got up in the seam. And I don't know how she did it. Her stitch length was just right, but she stitched in there and over and on. And when she turned her bag, her little zipper pull was in the seam. <laughs> so, I want to be careful. And we'll just, I'm going to do this just the way I did for this side. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this, and then I'll put the lining on. I'll put the lining on just like we did before. And I'll top stitch just like we did before. And then we'll move on to the next step. I just wanted you to see, I'm, I've sewn the back and the lining, my zippers in. And I'm doing the top stitching. And in order to get this back to lay flat, 
so that I can get a nice top stitch on here, I had to unzip the zipper. And it will, since this bag is sort of clam shaped, um, it's gonna uh, stick up here and you won't be able to top stitch the back without unzipping the zipper. So um, just gently kind of hold, whoops, hold that out of the way. And I can feel with my finger here I can feel that this is down as far as it's going to go, and I'm kind of finger pressing it as I go along. And then I'm reaching under here and taking a hold of the lining and making sure that it's not crinkling up under there or getting a fold in it or anything. And I'm watching my fingers. I don't want to get my fingers under the needle. And I'm just holding the, the right side of the, the bag with the zipper teeth out of the way. And I'm just kind of going along. And won't be long. And I'm going to stop at a half an inch here. So let me see. I need to adjust a little bit here. There we go. And we'll just about there. I did want to show you that you will have to unzip the zipper and hold it over a little out of the way. Okay, here we go. Well, it looks pretty good. I like it. Looks good. Got about the same amount of zipper tape on each side here of the zipper teeth. All our stitching looks nice. And my slip pockets on the back, the way I wanted it. And pretty soon, when we get ready to put this bag completely together, you'll see why we stopped in a half an inch. Because then when, when we put this together, which is going to be done this way when it's time, not yet, but it's time we'll put it together like this and this will be able to lay flat instead of having a, a bump here if we would have top stitched all the way down so I whoops I do that in a lot of a lot of my bag making I don't top stitch all the way off the edge so okay so we haven't talked about it yet but now is the time if you want to have a little wristlet handle for your little bag. Uh, we're going to do that next. And um, if you don't, and you just want to have a little clutch, then you can skip over to this next part of the video where we're going to make the handle and do the D-ring connector. And uh, when we get to it, then I'll show you how to box the corners and finish up your little bag because it'll be, we're just on the home stretch. We're nearly done. So the next thing we're gonna do is on this little bag, I'm gonna take some pink vinyl and I'm gonna make a handle, a wristlet handle and a D-ring connector and I'll show you how to do that. If you're gonna do cloth, you will follow the directions in the pattern. It's the very same thing. Uh, but you you will probably need to interface your cotton or your canvas or whatever you're you're using. You're going to need to interface it so you've got some stability. So, but I'm going to use vinyl, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So here's our cutting directions, and the pattern suggests that for the wrist strap. We cut a piece 15 inches wide by 4 inches high. And we need a D-ring strap that is 3 by 3. So let's cut those out. Um, let's see, I got a big ruler and I got my 3 inch ruler. And vinyl usually comes in a roll like this. Comes on a roll. Sometimes it comes on a cardboard support, a big heavy cardboard support, and it might have 
a little piece of what feels like silk or knit on the edge of it, and that's the selvage. And we talked about the selvage edge a little bit um, in our quilting, our quilt along that we're doing on the Bernina group. And what a headache it can be. So I'm gonna cut the salvage off and I probably won't keep it. I don't know what it would be good for actually. So, okay, let's see, where do we have 15 inches? Okay, so there's 15 here. And so that leaves me three. And I need, I got a little chunk out of here, but I need a three by three for my D-ring. Let's see here. For my D-ring holder, connector, one, two, three. And I think I'll just whack up this way and whack across this way. I'm pretty good at whacking. So now, let me see what I got here. So, can you see? I don't think you can see a thing I'm doing. I'm cutting out my three by three D-ring connector here. I got two sides cut. So I'm gonna try to cut backwards. I don't do this very often. All right, let's see, there we go. Okay, there's my D-ring connector. Now let's even this up. I need it even. So now we need, for the strap, we need a piece that is 15 by 4, don't we? Okay. So, oh my goodness, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, and there is 15. So. I'm going to just go right up my ruler this way and then I'm going to reach around the camera and try not to whack off my arm. Whoop. I guess I'm not going for the arm. I'm going for the big part of the body. Let me get this little guy off of here. Okay. All right. So now I think I'll just square up this bottom end and there's my strap. Maybe it doesn't need squared up, but we're going to try it anyway. There we go. Look, it did just a little bit. Okay. There's my strap. Here's my D ring connector. Now I got to think about some stability. Let me see how how this feels. Well, I don't know. I think it needs something. I know this one will because it's going to take some abuse. So let me think about this a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, I found some interfacing that I liked that will work with vinyl. Some vinyl you cannot get it hot. And in this, I just did a little light. You can even see it's not stuck down terribly good, but I'll sew it in, so it'll still be there. Um, and this is P44F, and you can see how lightweight it is, but it's just enough to give this the body that it needs, or that I think it needs. And I just used a pressing cloth, and I believe I used the silk, maybe, setting and pressed it, uh, not for very long. And if you have a heat press and you wanna try this, try a test first and just do a little scrap of your vinyl and do like five seconds and test, check it, five seconds, check it, five seconds, check it, that kind of thing and so that you don't ruin your vinyl. And some vinyls just cannot be ironed at all. In which case you would use your double stick tape or your your beacon three-in-one glue, you know, whatever you had to. And if you're um, 
if you can't find a stabilizer that's just right, you could use a piece of quilting cotton and just uh, sew it in. You know, as you go along, you could sew it in. It's kind of a pain to hold it together, but once you get it done, it, it's not going to go anywhere. So you can use quilt, quilt cotton too. So for our little D-ring, this is three inches, so um, an inch and a half is going to be the center of it. And we want it to finish out at one inch, I believe. So we are going to fold this in this way, this way, and I'm not going to have them touch in the middle. I won't have it touch on the strap either because this has to fold over. So there's got to be a little room for it to fold. Now let's check it with our D-ring. Oh, it's going to look pretty good. Pretty good. Now we're going to stitch this so it's going to look a lot better. But let's see now. How wide is that? It's not an inch, is it? So I think I need one that's an inch. Oh, let me see if I can finagle this little character around a little bit and see if I can come up with an inch here. I'm not very far off. Closer. I don't want it to slide around on there too much. You know, just like this. I don't want it to be all loose on there. So what I am going to do is I'll just keep working with this till I get it to where it's going to be a nice fit. It's just a D-ring connector, so I don't have to worry that, and I'm going to sew it. All right, I think that's about right. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to top stitch this down. So what I'm going to do is, down the long side, I'm just going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. And then I will go across one end. I could go across both ends, actually. Probably will. And up the other side at an eighth of an inch. So this will all be sewn in and enclosed. So I'm going to put my D-ring in here. And it fits really nice. And I'm going to clip it. And the pattern suggests that you put it on the side of the bag that the zipper opens from, which would be the left. And it suggests that you put it an inch down, let's see, and half an inch, a half an inch from the top edge. And it suggests that you leave a half an inch overhang. So that's about right there. So let's clip that in place and then we'll baste it before we do our um, side seams. We'll baste it real good. But in the meantime, we've got it positioned, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So there's that. So we've got our D-ring done. So let's do our handle now. And the handle's going to be done the same way that we did, let's see, where's my ruler? It's going to be done the same way we did the D-rings connector. Um, where this strap is going to finish, I believe. I'll sew at an inch maybe. So it's four inches, so we're going to go down the middle at two. That way we know 
where to fold everything into. And I have to remember to change my bobbin thread out. So when we're going to fold in, not quite to the center, on both sides, just like we did on the D-ring connector, we'll leave a little space so there's room for the fold. And we'll fold it like this. Now let's check and see how it looks with our swivel snap. Ooh, perfect. Okay, so this is going to work perfect. So we'll um, get this pin or clipped and um, then we can't actually sew this up for uh, uh, a good reason and I'll show you what that is. So I'm just kind of clipping my little wristlet handle here. Let's see, I think I need to pull that other side in. It's a little too far out. There we go, that's better. This isn't a terribly, terribly thick vinyl. So, I don't need a great big gap in the middle with leather or something, a heavier vinyl especially like a marine vinyl or something like that, you might need to leave a little bit bigger gap down the middle. But this is okay. So now we've kind of got it gapped in, or clipped. And you can see that I have left the ends free. So what we got to do here is we're going to fold it over. This is a little... A fun little trick that bag makers use and it looks beautiful when the strap is finished. Let's see, let's clip one more on this side and we want these edges to be nice and even here. So now we're going to take our um, swivel clasp and we're going to put it on here. I know we don't have anything sewn up yet, but trust, trust me. I hope you trust me. This is going to work beautifully. And I believe she teaches you how to do this in the directions too. So now we're gonna take our ends and we are going to open them out have to move my, let's see if I can move my clasp down whoop, whoop, whoop. a little bit more. There we go. Now then, now then, let's see, I might have to take that one out. Okay, so without, you know, twisting this so that you're, you're, you've got a a twist in it. You don't want that. When you bring your right sides together, and clip them, and I have to look, but I think it's, I gotta look and see what the seam allowance is that we're supposed to sew. Let me see. see that it gives me a seam allowance, but it looks like she's using about half an inch in the photo. So we'll use half an inch, because that will be all right. And we want it to be good and strong. So I'm gonna go sew a half an inch seam allowance along here. Okay, Get my half inch seam allowance sewn. And I'm just finger pressing this open and bringing it into the center except for my little tiny gap that I'm leaving. And I'm gonna clip this. And then we 
go. Bring these right sides together. Make sure we're nice and straight. And clip it. And then we'll finish clipping here as we kind of left that open while we did our center seam. And I'm just kind of rolling, rolling the vinyl along so that it lines up along this edge here. We just about have our strap done. That's nice. Okay. When we get our strap done, we're gonna box the corners, so the darts, on our little bag. Well, they won't really be box corners, but they'll be darted corners. And finish up our assembly on the bag and we'll be all done. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna top stitch eighth of an inch on this side, eighth of an inch on this side, all the way around. Eighth inch here, eighth inch here, all the way around and we'll just slide our lobster clasp out of the way as we go along. So I'm all lined up and ready to get started. I got my tissue paper handy if I start to feel a drag on the bottom. So here we go. I'm an eighth of an inch, 2.85 stitch length. Oh, I lost my stiletto. Oh, here it is. Alrighty. I have a much nicer stiletto than this, but I I don't know where it is. Okay, here we go. And I did put the right color bobbin thread in, and I'm starting at the seam, the half inch seam that I just sewed to connect the ends of the strap. It'll be nice to have those out of the way. Stretching. I'm not pulling or stretching. And my eighth inch is again on the inside of my presser foot here on this edge. My needle position is zero, I guess. Well, I didn't think it was, but I guess it is. That's an eighth of an inch. And my Bernina does have a free arm, but unfortunately, this will not fit around it. Some straps will, some bags do. I'm just gonna stitch along. I'm not really pulling or anything, I'm just holding and guiding. side. I'll go around the other side. And then we're going to we're going to have to make a decision again whether we want to use a rivet or if we want to sew a little closure or both to hold our strap together and keep our lobster clasp contained. You see I'm just moving it along ahead of me out of the way. If you stretch or try to pull on your vinyl, you'll get a twist. And we want our we want our little wristlet strap to lay really pretty. We went to all this trouble to make sure the bag was nice. So let's make sure we do it all the way through 100%. To scoot this just a little bit. There we go. All right, now home stretch right here. Here we go. If you 
can see this. Oh, I haven't had my hand in the way the whole time. All right, here we go. Should come right up on my first stitches. I'm gonna back stitch just a couple stitches. All right, side one done. Didn't need my tissue paper. Let's trim. I'll come back and trim those little fuzzies a lot better when I get my hands free. And there is a way to do this if you didn't want to backstitch. You can tie your threads, pull them in, and tie them in here. And then there are no backstitches that show at that. Okay, side two, same deal. Start at the half inch seam I just did to connect the strap together into a circle and head down. And this side will be easier because there's no clips in the way so we can go along pretty quickly. looks a lot trickier than it really is. Okay, a little back stitch. And there's our strap. We still have to connect the um, secure, I should say. We still have to secure the lobster clasp. Here's how I usually do that. I bring the clasp clear up here to there, and then I usually sew a couple of lines of stitching across here. But I'm thinking a rivet would be really pretty right there and add a little bit more bling. So I think I'm going to do a rivet, but you can definitely sew. You can do, um, you know, I'm going to use my stiletto. You can you, you can do a little box and with an X in the middle. Um, you can do a rectangle. You can just do a couple lines across. I do think it would take two lines of stitching to be really secure. Or you can do a rivet or a Chicago screw. There's probably a dozen other ideas for holding this together. But that's what I'm going to do, and there's our wristlet. I'll put my, I'm going to go ahead and put my rivet in my little wristlet strap now and have that all done. So I have two rivet presses. This is a small one, which I like for smaller projects and then I have a big cam snap press which is my favorite but it's really heavy and hard to get up here so I will use this one today doesn't make a big deal so I just kind of centered a little mark there where I want to punch my hole. So now I'm going to punch my hole for my rivet. Make sure I'm nice and centered. And I'm going to put my rivet in. And getting the right size rivet is really important. 
You want it to just peek through. And that's what mine's a doing. And so then I'll put my back side on. And now I'm gonna switch out to my uh, die that I need for a, I think this is a nine millimeter rivet. So it doesn't take any time to switch these out. And rivets make your whole project look so pretty and so smart. And now I'm just gonna class, clamp my rivet on. And there's that. So there's my rivet. I'm gonna trim my back stitching threads here and trim these little threads all up. And there's my handle, my little wristlet handle. Okay, so now let's finish up our bag. We're to the point that it's time to close it all in and turn it right side out and be done. Next step is to make all our darts. So we're gonna bring our little clipped edges together on the lower corners of the exterior of the bag and the lining. And we'll sew eight little darts. There'll be four on the bag, outside outer bag, and four on the lining. And I believe these are sewn at a quarter of an inch, but I'll look. I'm pretty sure it's a quarter of an inch. bag is starting to look like a pretty little wristlet bag. Okay, there's the lining and there's the exterior. So we're going to go and sew our little darts and let me look. I'm thinking, whoa, I'm thinking that they are, let me see if I can find out she sews these and then well a quarter inch maybe three eighths I think I'm going to do mine at a quarter inch okay so I switched to my uh, quarter inch foot and I was gonna sew these little darts at a quarter of an inch, but I looked on the pattern a little closer and they are to be 3 eighths inch. So, but I'm still gonna use my quarter inch foot. And um, since I'm gonna be sewing the lining and the lower part of the front, which is more light colored background fabric, I changed to a kind of a neutral thread color because I didn't want my pink, my bright pink thread to show through. Okay, so let's do these little puppies at 3 eighths of an inch. Let's make sure we're nice and even. And I'm going to use my trusty little ruler to see where 3 eighths is. One, two, three. It's clear over here to the edge of the feed dogs. Now, I'm, oops, now I'm ready to go. And I'm going to backstitch because we don't want these coming apart on us when we uh, get our bag together. Okay, there we go. One down. So that's just how they're supposed to look. 
and just a little dart that we're gonna put together. And on one side of the back, if I remember right, that slip pocket kind of gets in the way. The 3 8 inch seam goes up high enough that it bothers the where the slip pocket is sewn in. So we may have to fiddle with that a little bit. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. hurts to have your lining pieces a little bit deeper seam allowance anyway because you want your lining to fit in there nice and pretty so let's see I'm gonna do this So three eighths inch one, easy peasy. Worked on the front, really good. Let's do the other front. Clean. I hope you be. You can see this. Let me see. Let me get my hand out of the way. You know, filming these things isn't always the easiest task. You have to kind of think ahead. You have to look in two or three different places all at the same time. And then you have to remember to talk and talk intelligently me is, well, that's a miracle if that happens. Okay, so now we have, what we have left are the ones that are going to bump into our slip pocket. So let me line up here and come in, and you can kind of see the stitching on there. Here's my slip pocket. So I can't get clear up here very far, so we may have to have to finagle a little. Get that out of there. Okay, then let's back stitch. There we go. We made it. All right, so you're going to be really close to your slip pocket, but you'll make it. Let's do the last one. This is our last dart up against a slip pocket, of course. <laughs> Can't make it easy. And 3 8 inch seam. Whoops, my. I bumped my um, knee lift. Whoops, I bumped the camera. Okay, here we go. All right, we're good. My back stitching isn't the prettiest, but it's worked gonna work. All right, let's go see what the pattern tells us to do next. Okay, we're almost finished. We are really, really close. It's looking so nice. I hope yours is too. Um, next thing she suggests to do is to trim down the darts. So we'll do that. I don't usually, I sometimes I do, but not very often, but since this is a sew along, we'll do what the pattern says. Whoops, I missed a couple. Look at that. I'll have to go sew those. Okay, let's trim here. We'll trim this off. And I'm trimming them down to about a quarter of an inch or so. That's plenty, quarter of an inch. Well then, I got that one. I got that one, I got that one. Okay, 
Okay, I gotta go sew these other two, which I completely missed. I don't know how, but I did. You guys probably saw that and said, wait, wait, you're forgetting some. Well, I'll go ahead and clip them and take them over and sew them. And when I come back, we'll finish this deal up here. And then I've got a couple of really important things that you have to know before you go any further. Alrighty. I got them sewed up. Okay, now, we are ready to put our little bag together. But the first and foremost thing you have to do, and this is really, 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 really important because if you don't do this, uh, you'll be in big trouble. You have to unzip your zipper. At least halfway, I usually do mine almost all the way. And I did baste in my D-ring holder while I was over there. So, um, now when I do this, I usually put one dart this way and the other dart the other way so they nest like you do with a quilt lock. So, let's put these together. And this is the front of my bag. And look, your center fronts should match right up. And they do. I'm gonna have to go get some more clips. Okay, that one's out. So this one wants to go out, needs to go out. And the other one toward that way. And we're gonna be really careful when we get up to our side seams because remember we didn't top stitch all the way out. And that is so we can get a flat, a nice flat seam right here. And we're trying to do that. We're going to try to do this at 3 8 inch. I'm going to make my um, my lining seam. I might even go an eighth of an inch or so more so that my lining is a little bit smaller. And we definitely want our, you know, these deals here. They need to line up and match. And you might have to work at this a little bit. I don't wanna make everything work out the right way, but it shouldn't be too much. Mine, mine seems to be going together pretty good, and I didn't, I wasn't very careful. So I'll clip this, and then I'll clip up to the other side. I'm gonna make sure my D-ring's on the inside there and not flipped back. You don't wanna have it flipped back where you're gonna hit it. So let's make sure it's flipped out of the way. And make sure these guys line up. I'm kinda of pushing mine open, I don't know. I don't think you have to if you don't want to. It's just really important that they line up. So, you know, I, I want mine to line up. And same deal on your, um, on your lining, on the little darts to make your corners. One goes one way, one goes the other so that they hug each other. Like that. And we're not gonna worry about the center. Let's see, what's this one coming in? Okay, so that one comes in and that one goes out. Try to stay in the camera. Okay, and we're not gonna sew very far past the darts on the lining and we're gonna stop sewing and we're gonna leave a big hole in the bottom of the bag. Leave a big hole in the bottom of the bag. So like, I'll stop sewing right where my thumbs are so that I've got this great big hole which I'm gonna use to turn the bag through and now you see why it's important to have the zipper open. 
Okay, let's go sew this around and put this puppy together. Make sure everything lines up. And I might even double check a few things as I go along. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm about, I don't know, I'm more than an inch. I'm gonna scooch in some. Then from the dart on, this is the bottom edge of the bag of the lining of the bag. And so I'm gonna, and it's supposed to be a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna come up, I might do, I don't know, I'm gonna cheat and fudge over just a little bit. That's gonna be about half an inch. And when I come around and I get up to here, I'll be back to 3 8 of an inch up here. Because I just want my lining to be a little smaller than my bag, than the, than the exterior of my bag, so that it'll sit in there really pretty. Some pattern makers have started uh, actually designing the lining patterns in their bags to be smaller, and so we don't have to worry. I'm going to have to think about making a smaller, or a, um, taking a larger bite out of the seam allowance and the lining of the bag. Okay, now I'm going to just come up a little long right here and back to three-eighths of an inch by the time I get up here to my, my line. And I can feel underneath here that my zipper tab is clear up here and out of the way. We don't ever want to catch our zipper tab in the seam allowance. Okay, so I'm just kind of creeping in. And there I am, at 3 eighths of an inch right there. And I'm going over my little bump. And I'm gonna stay at 3 eighths inch now because I'm on the front. And I went ahead and left my neutral colored thread in there, even though I have pink fabric right here. And I'm going to double check this, make sure that that is behaving itself where it's supposed to be. And come right around the corner. And this is a pretty good curve on this corner, but if it were tighter, we could use our little trick that I taught you on the slip pocket. It'll make a nice pretty corner on the outside. Someday you might want to make a wallet or a card wallet just for cards. And so you'll you'll want to use your little trick I taught you. The fabric would like to slip a little bit. Coming around. And before I get to my Look how perfect they line up. Wow. Okay. We'll just keep going. And now I've come to my um, D ring connector. And look how much higher it is than my presser foot. So I'm going to need to go get my height adjustment tool. Be right back. Okay, this is called the Bernina Height Compensation Accessory. And you can see it comes in three, there's three levels. You can use one level, two levels, or three levels, which is what this is gonna take. So when I get up here, let me take a couple more stitches. Let's see, I wanna get where I'm, there we go. Coming in straight. Now I see my presser foot is beginning to raise up here in the front. So what I'm gonna do 
is put my height compensation accessory behind there. Actually, see how much room that is? Maybe I just need to. You can tell. You'll be able to see, you know, when you get in the midst of it. Oh yeah, much better. All right, so we'll just creep along. And I'll keep sliding my tool forward, moving my tool forward so that my, my presser foot just glides along. And I might have to use it on the other side too. We'll see. Okay, here's the deal. I'm at a quarter of an inch I got off. So that's three eighths inch out here and I'm at a quarter of an inch. So I may have to come back um, when I'm done with this. I may have to come back and tidy that seam allowance up. And I see I'm gonna get a little, eh, maybe I got a little tuck there. Okay, so I'm back on the lining. And I'm gonna buzz back out to half an inch. And when I get past the start, I'm only gonna go an inch or so, and I'm gonna stop, because we need all this room to turn this. Some bag patterns will just leave you a couple inches here. And you have to turn the whole thing through just that little couple inches, but there's no reason for that. You can leave as big a, a space as you want. Okay. I have even left the whole bottom of the bag open and boxed the corners after I turned it right side out. There's kind of a little trick to that too. All right, let's go see if the pattern tells us to trim around here, which I'm guessing it will. And plus then I want to see, I think maybe I'll go ahead and double stitch this now. Let's see, just do it now and get back over on my 3 8 inch. Um, and this is gonna give me kind of a little bit of an advantage too because no ladder stitches are gonna show here on my little, because I'm gonna sew it twice. So I have to remember to watch here and make sure I'm at 3 8 inch seam allowance. And guess what? I don't wanna sew through that. <laughs> I better get my needle down before I sew through this. One stitch back. Keep on. 3 8 inch. Pretty, pretty good. All right. Okay, let's try it out and see how it looks. If we don't like it, once we get it turned, we can always go back and do some fine tuning. Okay. Alrighty. She does say to trim this seam allowance around here to one eighth inch, except where along the bottom here where we're gonna turn the bag through this hole. So let's do a little trimming and I'm gonna use my pinking shears. That way I can kind of get some, a little ease into these corners. And so when you are trimming, just make sure that, and I'm not gonna trim that, Make sure that um, you don't catch your stitching. You don't wanna, woo, I got a tough spot. You don't wanna trim into your, clip into your stitching at all. There we go. Pretty quick, I'm gonna go and do the other two bags and catch up. Okay, back up to the tough, a tough spot. Oh. Yeah, let me just cut through there. There we go.
There we go. Okay, we're around the corner. So there we are. That's what it should look like. Let's turn it right side out. Let's see what we got. And I usually start at one corner and I push it in and then I start at another corner. It's kind of like I do on the slip pocket when we turn that and I said I, I usually do one corner and then I do the other corner. I try not to manhandle this too much or any of my bags that I make when I'm turning them. Um, it, it helps with not getting so many wrinkles or, uh, you know, troublesome places. And this little bag feels nice and sturdy. I'm just kind of pushing out my seams here. Get my, well, oh, got a thread. My lower edges. Let's check and see how good we did on our matching. Oh, nice. That's pretty nice. Sometimes they're just not perfect and they're never going to be, so don't worry about it. If they don't line up just right, no big deal. This one's probably a sixteenth of an inch off. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. All right, nice, very nice. Okay, let's put the lining down inside. We're gonna take it back out again here in a little bit so that we can stitch the hole closed that we just um, turned our bag through. And here's our pretty little edges. Nice, very nice. And I can see we're going to have to press this a little bit before we're completely finished. But I'm not surprised, so. All right. Lucky. Look at that. Okay, we've got a nice interior. There's our slip pocket. Everything looks beautiful. We are going to have to press a little bit. And check out all our corners. All right, let me press this up and get it looking pretty. And there is our little bag. And I'll finish up with the other two and we'll have a look at them. This looks really, really nice. Let's put our handle on. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I think what I'll do is I'll put a tassel on here too and maybe a charm. I might hang a charm from the zipper pull. And our embroidery turned out just gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna press it. All right, so I pressed it a little bit not much, just a little bit. And um, the last thing that there is to do is to take the lining and just bring it up through enough. Turn this under about a half an inch because that's what our seam allowance was. And I'm matching the centers out of clips. Let's see if I can scooch you over. And you can top stitch this closed, or you can hand stitch. I I enjoy both. So. I just do whatever the mood strikes. If I feel like sitting and watching a movie and hand stitching several linings closed, then I do. 
And if I don't want to, I just top stitch along here. But there's our little bag all finished. And so now I'm going to go ahead and, and close this and finish up the others. And I'll be back and we will bid our uh, little clematis so along farewell. Okay, here we are. We're completely done with our little clematis wristlet sew along. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, week by week little sew along for this uh, cute little bag. I added some tassels and um, so we put piping and embroidery and we worked with vinyl and cork a little bit, and or maybe you just use fabric, that's okay. Um, anything is a learning experience. And uh, I was glad to have you come along with me and um, work on these little bags. I wanna say a very, very special thank you to Blue Cala Bags for giving me permission to do this so along. And uh, it is very much appreciated. Um, uh, I guess we'll just have to say it's over. I kind of hate to say goodbye to it, but uh, maybe we'll come up with something new to do for our next sew along. You can give me suggestions. Um, please post photos on the Bernina groups of the little bags that you make. I would love to see them. And uh, any questions or if you get in trouble, just give me a a shout, um, email or message, or uh, you can post a comment here on YouTube also. And uh, please subscribe and like my videos. It, it helps to support my channel. And if you would like to go and uh, subscribe and follow my blog, there are lots of fun Bernina things there too. I don't sell anything on my blog. Um, and that is fiddlesticksandstitches.com. And thank you so much. And you guys have a great day. Sew something pretty and post your photos so I can see them.